the amount of plastic that's being produced goes up every year, the cost of plastic goes up every year, and that's really building this marketplace where you need high quality automation to be able to deal with the load. There's an old saying, where there's a will, there's a way. But the way is not always clear with a problem as large and as complicated as recycling. Global rates for plastic recycling are as low as 9%, and only 6% of new plastic is made from recycled products. To encourage more buy-in, innovators must make recycling as efficient and cost-effective as possible, which is why companies are turning to AI and big data. Rory, why is plastic so hard to recycle? The main issue is there's so many different types of plastic. So, you know, this, I think there's over 60 different types of plastic. All of them are different type of plastic, different colour, different shape, different material. So, so it's difficult to understand what can actually be recycled, what goes into which grade. There is a lack of standardisation and packaging and recycling ability. Every country and the local authorities within it have different systems. That means that not all grades or all types of plastic that can be recycled are being recycled. That's where advanced machine learning can help. This is the RE3 recycling plant in Reading, England, managed by FCC Environment. I've come here because General Manager Rory Bryan is always on the lookout for ways to improve how much waste can be recycled. Everything that's kind of come through the plant, this is where it comes out around here. Each year, tens of thousands of tonnes of recyclable waste is brought in and sorted by a mixture of technologies, including people. Hidden away in the middle of this huge plant is his newest technology acquisition. So all of the waste comes in the mix recyclable, so that will have paper, cans, plastics, all of those sorts of things in there. And they go through various parts of the machinery, so we have optical sorters, we have um, magnets that take out the metal. And so and then what will happen then is once those come out, the plastics makes its way up into the, that conveyor belt there and then goes into the cabin where the robot is. Ah, the robot's over there. Yes. It's got its own private residence. Yes, it has, yeah, it's got its own little cabin. Yeah, it's not very sociable, so yeah, it keeps itself to itself, yeah. A robot always looks cool, but it's just the muscle. It's the brain, the vision technology I want to see, which has been developed by Recycle Eye. The robot arm is connected to LED lights, a camera and a computer. Here it's programmed to separate out the plastic, which will be sold and recycled. Okay, so we'll take a look inside the cabin now. So, what you're wanting to collect here are the, the milk bottles. So you've told the robot what, what to do. So the primary function is to make sure that on the far side of the belt, that's where all the milk bottles are. So when the plastic comes into the cabin, the robot is scanning it, it's looking where those milk bottles are, make sure that they're on that side, any that are this side, move across to there, anything that's not a milk bottle on that side, take it off. The robot sucks up each item and blows it to where it's instructed to by the computer. Any plastic that's not a milk bottle goes off for further processing or burning, as does the waste blown into bins off the side of the belt. Milk bottles are the grade of plastic worth the most money. This system helps ensure the client is getting a higher percentage of what they paid for. So it's important for them that we send them the right product to say, yeah, they'll have to either process it or they won't be able to run it through their plant. And of course, by sending them the right product, it means that they're always going to want it and that, yeah, we get a better price for that material. To understand how recyclized vision tech works, I've come to central London to talk to one of the brains behind it, Peter Headley. The workshop is under a railway line, so now and then you will hear the train rumbling overhead. Where did this idea even come from in the first place? Victor and I uh, went to university together. Um, he did environmental engineering at Imperial College London, and I also did computer science. So the kind of combination of those two things, which is computer vision applied to waste, came out of his master's thesis and then we both went to work in industry for a bit and they came back to this idea and went, you know what, let's give it a go because there's such a need for it in the industry that, you know, it, things aren't automated and kind of this opens up a whole new opportunity to make more things recyclable. Peter and Victor De Wolf founded Recycle Eye in 2019. This year they won the inaugural European Patent Office Young Inventors Prize. They've come a long way in a short time. So is this is what it would look like in your what your parents' garage where you and Victor started out? 
put what with a, a conveyor belt like this. So it's a, a similar kind of concept, but very <laughs> different. Um, so back in my parents' garage, we were in Bull in Dorset, and we bought a 40 pounds treadmill off eBay, um, stuck it in the back of my car, took off the uh, kind of, you know, the, the handlebar bit, and then used that as our first ever conveyor belt. And then we had local waste from uh, the bins in Dorset, uh, which were our first waste samples that we then uh, trained the algorithms with. The algorithm is the clever part of RecycleEye. Many of us associate the word algorithm with the web and social media such as Facebook. There, the algorithm shows what is most relevant to the user, so it will give you more of what you click on. RecycleEye uses a comparable machine learning algorithm, according to engineer Nick Castanos. So how we go around developing such an algorithm is we show it images and hand-labeled solutions to what it is seeing in the image. Uh, and after lots and lots of repetition, uh, the learning algorithm ends up getting you to a program that can relate the input to the output. So if we take the example of the aluminum can, it has a ring lid at the top, at the bottom, and is generally of certain colors. So the algorithm can pick up on those features and learns that those are associated to an aluminum can, and that can be extended to things that it has never exactly seen before. The boxes around each item are called banding boxes. Each has a number. The higher the number, the more certain the program is that it's been correctly identified. So let's have a look at the model you've got running at the moment. We've got red boxes and we've got green block and blue ones as well. <laughs> what does it all mean? So the colours attribute to a different type of material. Uh, so over here, our red ones are the aluminium cans. You can see over here that it has successfully detected that it's a Coke can. But that's not all that the algorithm can do. So in this case, it is also like learning what a coffee cup is or what a plastic cup is. Uh, and that way, the same robot can deliver multiple points of value to the client. Okay, so you might have, or the client might have a couple of robots and say, right, I want aluminium cans, but I also want plastic cups. That is exactly what is happening here. Clients were excited by the possibilities of RecycleEye, but they wanted to see a prototype fast to show it could work on an industrial scale. That's when Jan Glauser joined the team. So Jan, you're the engineering manager. Did Peter and Victor basically come to you and say, right, we've got this idea, make it work? Yeah, the very first thing that they came uh, to me with was basically a small prototype, uh, which was not really made for like any industrial setting. So turned this into like a much more ruggedized version. And then within basically about a month, I got the first prototype out. So it was like very short timeline initially. A month? That's no time. Why so fast? Uh, just a client that they just had got some investment uh, in. And obviously now everything was kicking off. And so kind of startup style, just having to run through it. The robot arms are made by Finnick, the second largest robot manufacturer in the world. RecycleEye takes the arm and builds a new product. Jan spent time developing the pneumatic air controlled system so rubbish wasn't blown across the room. But he had another priority. The main product that we had to work on initially was very much the computer vision aspect, so the camera aspect, which if we strip it down, it's basically a camera, a bunch of lights and a computer. And is it taking a video, the camera? It just basically takes photos up to 60 frames per second type oh, wow. of thing. Uh, so it just depends on the that's where we kind of like tend to match it depending on the speed of the belt. The faster the belt, the more pictures we need to take to, to get more chances to actually detect the item. But hang on, how's it going to pick all, it must freak out, go, I can't do this work. So it actually has some algorithm at the back and it will basically queue out the items to detect, to figure out which ones, what's, how many it can pick and which ones it's going to have the higher probability of hitting all of these basically to, to maximize the number of items that get picked. Extra robotic arms can be added at several points along the conveyor belt to maximise picks. But if the client only wants one robotic arm, the computer algorithm prioritises what should be picked. So what we try and do is maximise the revenue for the client at every single pick that we do. So we can detect individual items, so we can say, you know, plastic or fibre, etc. But what actually, given the robot can pick a certain number of picks per minute, what is the most valuable thing to pick 
at any particular time. And by using this strategy on top of the kind of core layer of AI, we can really improve the business case of the clients. Clients send the team boxes of waste. Images are taken, which are then fed into the algorithm. Every client has its own model or program, depending on what they want to recycle. But it's not just the clients who are benefiting. The Recycle I team has created a database of these images called WasteNet. It's freely available to students and researchers, which could help the recycling industry continue to find better solutions. Yeah, so, so every year we have done projects with these students in Imperial College London. It's really exciting to get young engineers involved in waste, thinking about computer vision, how it might be beneficial to the industry as a whole. Um, and we generally give them some of the harder questions that we kind of don't really know whether they'll work and they really surprise us sometimes with, with the results that they have. So um, it's been a really good collaboration where we kind of try and stay on the forefront of research in terms of computer vision and especially computer vision applied to waste. Um, and that really enables us to push our tech stack further. WasteNet has over 2.3 million items so far and counting. Different clients, different locations around the world have different customs and different regulations. So for example, a, a bottle that contains bleach might be made out of PP in the UK, but be made out of HTPE somewhere in the Americas. And that's a different kind of plastic. It is a different kind of plastic, it has different value points, and it is recycled in a very different way. So by being able to know geographically what the differences are, we can end up providing different sorting schemes, which means that they can be recycled more efficiently. The amount of plastic that's being produced, so that goes up every year. The cost of plastic, recycled plastic, goes up every year. Um, and that's really building this marketplace where you, know, you need high quality sorting and you need high quality automation to just be able to deal with the load. At the RE3 facility in Reading, the Recycle-I system came as a kit and was put in over a weekend. Since then, Rory has kept his own eye on the performance and the data it's producing. So once it's programmed, it knows what it's doing, it always does that. It doesn't get tired, you know, it's, it's constantly focused. It makes sure that we can prioritise on the, the main materials to get the purity correct. And the other thing that we get the bonus is the vision technology tells us exactly what's on that belt. So we will be able to tell how many items of material have gone through there, what those materials are, how many the robot picked, you know, so we get a lot of data from that that enables to look at the plant and make sure that it's performing well in all of the other areas. Identifying new waste streams that could be recycled is a bonus, but the priority for Rory is to ensure the highest purity of each bale, meaning it's as close to 100% of a certain material as they can get. That makes it easier to recycle. So what improvements have you seen since you've installed Recycler? So we've seen two main improvements. We're now getting up to 99% purity with the, the finished product of the HDPE. So that's less than 1% contamination. You know, and historically we was probably getting around sort of 95 to 98% on, on that. It doesn't sound like a great improvement. It, it doesn't sound in percentage terms, but of course in volume, when you're handling hundreds of tons, that's quite a big improvement, you know? And any improvement is good because it means that we've got a sustainable outlet for that material. Uh, one of the other big improvements we've seen is a 12% increase in the amount of target materials picked from the belt. So that means that actually there's been an increase in recyclables taken from that belt. So that saves further processing costs. Any improvement is welcome. And RecycleI is busy with 17 vision systems dotted around Europe, the US and Australia. So what's next? Is it merely about selling more units? Yeah. So. At the moment, we can produce a limited number of units and we're actually backed up with orders until mid next year. So we really need to be able to service the demand in the industry and be able to scale up the number of robots that we can deploy. Um, so that's one of the stages, but also thinking about new products and new ways of identifying and pushing through the capabilities of the sorting industry much further. Some of the numbers you heard may not seem impressive, but humanity is on a journey towards a circular economy where nothing goes to waste and RecycleEye is another step on that journey.